we always told you, the yogic systems always insisted that the microcosm and the macrocosm are made the same way. If you know this piece of life, you will know everything in the universe because that's how it is made. When they say, if you know the way these bosons behave and what they are, they are saying we will know the whole universe, the way the universe was made, we will understand. But you don't understand that you are also a bloody boson. In the cosmic space, you are just a boson. So you are as much as a Higgs boson in the universe. If you observe this, if you pay enough attention to this, you would know everything. But if you have not even paid attention to anything around you, paying attention to within you will be out of course. So today, science is entering those spaces because never ever is anybody going to see a Higgs boson. They are only going to see its footprint. Even now they only saw the footprint, they did not see a Higgs boson. But because they see the footprint, they believe he is there. Somebody has gone by, they left the footprints, we have not seen the man, but we know it's gone by. We go into the forest, we see the pug marks and we say, okay, there is a tiger. We haven't seen the tiger. In fact, in a tropical forest, it's very difficult to see a tiger. But we will see pug marks here and there. Just like that, they saw the footprint. So they're entering Vishesh Gyan. If you go further, it will become Shunya, that means absolute emptiness. There, your intellect will be completely useless. Your senses will be completely useless because there is no physicality. Where there is no physicality, your sense organs and intellect will become absolutely redundant. Shiva means that which is not. If you touch that which is not, we have always seen it is not physical in nature. It is not physical in nature means it does not exist, but it is opaque. How can that be? It is not in the realm of your logical mind. Today modern science believes the whole existence has to oblige to human logic, which is a very limited way of approaching life. The whole existence will not oblige to human logic. You think you can fit the whole existence into your head. No, no, your head fits into the existence. The existence will not fit into your head. Your logic can analyze the physicality of the existence. Once you cross the physical dimension, your logic is completely out of its realm. So, this story I will… because I will make it so brief, there could be holes in it. If I make it elaborate enough, there will be no holes in the story, it's a perfect theory. And we have proved it within ourselves that it is true. But you want to build a ten billion dollar instrument under the ground, to prove the same thing, it's up to you. What does it mean to physics? I mean, it means a lot to spirituality and philosophy. But what it means to physics is that if physicists understood that, this simple example, they would stop building accelerators. We keep thinking that we're going to find the smallest particle. And then we found sub subatomic particles and so on and so on. And it's like, wait, you know, 
You keep, and every time we're finding these new particles is because we're building larger and larger accelerators so that we can accelerate particles at faster and faster rate and collide them together to get smaller and smaller and smaller particles. And now we've built, a, you know, a, a device that's like an accelerator that's 17 miles long. I think it's cost like a you know, ten billion dollars at this point or something. It's extreme, it took like five countries to finance it. And we're thinking we're gonna find this farm, final particle and it's like, and, and guarantee you there's some smart person out there that's gonna find a new way to write the equator and go, oh, maybe there's something smaller, we need to build a larger accelerator. Well, you know, those things have a finite uh, limit, meaning like there's, there's constraints on what we can build. So, maybe instead of looking for a fundamental particle, a God particle, we should start looking for a fundamental pattern of division. Because if we understood the pattern, then we would understand how the universe creates. We would have the key to the divisions of the space that produce our reality. We would have the, cre the key to creation. That could be fairly useful. <laughs> this can be experientially proved within yourself if you are willing to go into the depths of what this is. Because this is made exactly the same way the whole universe sure, is made. One of the made. most poetic things I know about the universe is that every atom in your body was once inside a star, and in fact the atoms in your left hand could have been in a different star than your right hand, because Here. we're connected, <laughs> we're, we're directly connected to, star, to, to, to the cosmos. And uh, For me, that's one of the most poetic things in, in the universe. If you go deep enough into this, and you know how this is made, by inference, you know how everything in the universe is made by inference. And even now, science is also only inferring. Today modern science has admitted that it's an ever-expanding universe or an endless universe. Rather, ever-expanding is a yogic term. They are calling it an endless universe. If it's an endless universe, trying to travel across the universe and find out the nature of the universe is untenable, isn't it? simply out of question. The only way you could know the nature of the universe, nature of the creation and the source of creation is by going in. Matt, luckily, a uh, master of meditation that was not much older than me, I think he was like 15 or 16, and he taught me how to meditate. And when he taught me to how to meditate, I learned that there's, oh, you can turn your senses from the outside to the inside and you can go towards the center and, oh, you know, there's a whole world there. And as I thought about that, I thought, oh, maybe the solution between infinities and finite system is that there's, there's stuff going in and then there's stuff going out and the two, you know, uh, meet and create boundary condition that we think are finite boundaries. Because whatever you ate in the morning, whether it's a idli or a dosa or a banana, has been transformed into a human being in the last few hours. Nobody else can do this except the source of creation. So if the source of creation is right here, if you want to know anything about creation, isn't it the best place to consult? If you want to know anything about creation, isn't the source of creation the best place to consult? And if you had to go to heaven for this, you could give it up. If it is right here, why don't you consult? Simply because you too enamored by your own thought. You think you are going to capture the whole universe with your thoughts. It is a foolish way to approach. The only reason why science has survived is because of technology. It keeps throwing out technologies. 
If no technologies were coming out of science, they were just talking about all the things that they have been talking, people would have beaten them down for the money that they spent. And it's happened in the past when there were no technolo technologies and people just spoke science, they were beaten down, isn't it? <laughs>